Today we're going to focus on kids and divorce and what divorce looks like from the perspective of a child or maybe some of the ways they think about their parents' interactions with one another or how the whole divorce process could trickle down and affect them. So it's important to look at divorce from the perspective of a child because ultimately our practice philosophy is to reduce trauma to the child and we do that by working with our clients through restorative practices, mm -hmm. encouraging them to model good co-parenting behavior even if they're not feeling like it so that it minimizes the effects on the child. But there's a, there's a lot of information out there about no matter what you do, a child's going to know that you are separating and that you're divorcing and they will have opinions about what they see, hear, feel. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time today talking about what kids might be thinking about but are, are sometimes feeling afraid or feeling intimidated or overwhelmed and so they don't say it. I think that um, kids, uh, you know, are, are very smart. They know what's going on and they take on the traits or actions, characteristics of the parents, you know, and you hear about and we've seen it where uh, couples who are divorcing will, you know, sit the kids down and tell them what's going on and, you know, put on a, a good front that, you know, they're so going to be a family and even though things are changing, we'll, uh, we'll keep things the same as much as possible. And, you know, it's important and we look at it from our practices and it's important to keep up, you know, that original uh, <clears throat> premise of, you know, keeping the kids the focus and, you know, being good to each other as, you know, divorcing uh, spouses. You know, and it's when we see a lot of in the divorce process, especially, um, you know, litigated, you know, heavily litigated cases, right, that the parents become bitter with each other. Mm -hmm. And that bitterness, while I think they, parents, parents don't do it on purpose, you know, sometimes they do, but most the, of them don't the parents will use the kids as a wedge you know between the other uh, parent uh, you know and <clears throat> I think that plays a lot into what how kids act and how they feel about the divorce and, and all of that well and it influences the children's relationships with others if they see uh, parents that are not able to successfully co-parent or positively co-parent, I should say, um, not only is it going to influence the child-parent relationship, it's going to influence that child's ability as a grown-up to have relationships. And so trying to start from a very early process in your separation to plan for how you can have consistency between the two co-parents, how to get on that same page for guidelines of parenting, and how you can communicate in a way that is going to be tough at the beginning, but with practice will get easier. Having that plan early on is going to give your kids the best chance of success to one, cope with the divorce or separation, but then two, also grow up to be well-adjusted kids or well-adjusted adult children who can then have successful relationships and successfully problem solve. But any type of separation or divorce is going to have an effect on your children. It's really up to the parents as to the degree of harm or management, positive management of that process. It's up to them how they're going to affect their kids. Um, but 
working as a guardian ad litem, working as a divorce attorney, the kids will know often before the parents think that there is a disruption within their family dynamic. Um, and, and so again, I want to focus on what kids might be feeling or saying amongst themselves or their peers that they might not share with their co-parents to give the listeners a perspective, a child's perspective, mm. so that when you are planning to divorce or separate or you are going through it, maybe you can learn from some of these insights and modify your divorce or separation plan so that you can adjust and have it be child-centered. Um, if you're focusing on the true best interest of your children and it's a child-centered process, you're going to have more success. Yeah. I think um, one of the things that parents sometimes don't understand when they're going through a divorce is that a child might feel, the two of you are getting divorced, but I'm not divorcing my other parent. And kids will adapt to each household and they may act a certain way with mom and they may act a certain way with dad. And in order to either feel comfortable with the parent they're with, they may say or do things to please that parent, but also to soothe and please themselves. And what happens in separation then, perhaps the co-parents might hear about that and wonder, you know, well, the children or the child always says they want to be with me. The child says they don't want to be with dad. And I'm not saying that it's inaccurate or a child's lying, but I am saying a child will read the room, will understand that mom gets sad if I bring up dad, if that's the case in your family, sure. or dad gets upset if I bring up mom, and they adjust. So they're not willfully trying to lie to you, but children will recognize the two of you are getting divorced. I'm just in the middle of this. I'm not divorcing the other parent. And they might go to each other, the other parents, and say different things, act differently. Um, they may say, I don't want to go to the other parent's house. And not so much because it's true they don't want to go, but they feel they might make you sad if you ever say, I do want to go to the other house. So we have to analyze the layers of the children's communication. But at the bottom of that all, I think co-parents need to realize kids don't feel a separation like the parents do. Right. It's still mom, it's still dad, it's still my parent. And their behavior is going to be different through this really challenging time. Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh... Another um, kind of aspect of that and um, moving on with how kids are thinking is about visitation. You know, when families talk about, well, I got to take, you know, so-and-so to practice and, you know, or to dance class or to this and that, that's just part of the family dynamic, you know. However, when the parents are separating or are separated, you know, now they tend to talk about it in terms of projects. Oh, well, I have to take, you know, I have to do this. I have my own life, right? It's when uh, they start quantifying it and saying, well, if you're taking that weekend, then you owe me a weekend. Yeah. And they start quantifying it rather than talking about a child like they're a human in the room <laughs> right? <laughs> and they might be talking about this in front of the kids yeah. during exchanges. I yeah. think that's what you were talking yeah, about. Um, that is, you know, and just, you know, talking about the child, like they don't want to drive or take the, you know, the, the kids places or this and that, and, and you know, to have them come over and, and things like that. They look at it as like you said, you know, well, you get this, I get this, you know, and then, oh, I, you know, but to a child, that's like, hey, like, I, you know, I'm here also, you know, and it's, yeah. I think it's important to, for parents to remember that children are not projects. They're an important part of the family dynamic, whether you're together or not together, you know. And, and. Young children, they just want to know that they're being taken care of. 
and that they can go to a parent and no matter what that parent's going to take care of their needs and when co-parents start quantifying or swapping or talking in very cold business-like terms about a child's schedule in front of a child that's there's a disconnect and the kids internalize that yeah. and they realize it doesn't look like mom or dad are happy and they're talking about me right and that can make a child just feel without them being able to articulate it uncomfortable right right and, and children don't handle that well right they when their feelings get hurt they tend to lash out or you know like if they yeah. if dad hurts their feelings for whatever reason well I don't want to be with dad, you know? And so, uh, you know, it's just important to remember, I think for parents to, you know, put the, the children first and to talk about it in positive terms, you know? There are services that can help co-parents effectively shield some of their interactions about co-parenting from their children. And one of the services that we provide, uh, I can be your parenting coordinator. And part of that could be that I help you learn how to positively communicate with your co-parent. I act as a buffer between the two co-parents until you can take your co-parenting training wheels off and get through a couple months of parenting coordination. And then you can communicate on your own but we can give you essentially a training program where I can review communications. I can help you rephrase communications mm -hmm. to keep it again, child centered, but that if anybody were to view those communications, it wouldn't be problematic and it takes work. Your anger about your separation doesn't go away overnight. Your sadness about your separation doesn't go overnight. Your guilt, your, emotions for you know protecting your children through this process doesn't go away overnight and there are times when co-parents just communicate poorly but there's resources to help you so that's one thing a parenting coordinator can definitely help act as a buffer and a trainer legal consulting or co-parenting coaching either of those services, and an attorney is going to view it more from the perspective of what would happen if the judge saw this and teach you how to communicate with your co-parent. But as a co-parenting coach, we're working with you directly, I'm working with you directly, again, on that communication style and pointing out some options for you or some resources. There are online resources that can also help you reframe your co-parenting communication so you can practice that orally when you're talking and meeting and exchanging children and you can practice that with all of your communication so it takes work but with practice it will become second nature and at the end of the day it's positive co-parenting we're striving for because it will help your children yeah. we are not saying that you and your co-parents will reunite because of these services but what we're doing is we're trying to have a successful co-parenting relationship that gives your kids skills to also grow up and have successful relationships with other people or handle conflict in a mature uh, and beneficial way. So any questions about co-parenting, custody, parenting time, visitation, a child's perspective on all of these issues as well, um, I would love to sit down and talk to you so you can give us a call at our office um, and uh, we can help you with all of your parenting matters. Sounds good.